My name is Allison, and I'm an experience curator at Kudos, which is a platform all about making meaningful connections here in the Lower Mainland and beyond. Today, our talented guest comes from the world of food blogging, documenting her journey through recipes and Vancouver highlights like the best pho, poke, and the matcha tiramisu we're just about to get into. You can find more of Brenda's recipes and reviews at Pistachio Picks or at her Instagram handle by the same name. And don't worry, I'll put this in the chat and also on our Facebook um, event page, just in case you do want to find the links. And just to let you know, I will be muting everyone, just because when we're mixing and whisking away, so we can hear Brenda nice and clear. Right. Any questions you have in the chat, or when mm. Brenda lets us know it's a good time for us to ask her questions, just put your hand up like um, this, so we can take turns and we don't miss anyone's comments. Oh. And we will be recording this with the spotlight on Brenda, so you can re-watch this, um, any of the steps, if you want to make this again in the future. Awesome. And, um, but if you did share something that you don't want to be included, you can let me know at hello at kudos.ca, and I can edit out any juicy secrets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, thank you so much for being here with us, Brenda. Can you tell us a little bit more about what made you um, get started with this recipe? And let me spotlight you so people can see you. <laughs> Hello, hi everyone. My name is Brenda. Um, I'm, I'm a huge matcha fan. So when I created the regular tiramisu, I realized it's so easy to swap cocoa powder out and put matcha powder in. So that's how I came up with the matcha tiramisu recipe. All right, so shall we get started? Okay, yeah. so for ingredients, we have mascarpone cheese, we have two egg yolks, we have some sugar, and then we have some store-bought ladyfingers. And of course, we have matcha powder and whipping cream. So we're going to make the matcha mascarpone cream first, and I'm going to put some stuff away first. All right, so I already prepped this in a bowl, but I have two bowls, and the bottom bowl has some boiling hot water, and there's maybe around half a cup of hot water. It's enough to touch the bottom of this top bowl. By doing this, we're cooking the egg yolks. So I'm going to put two egg yolks in the top bowl. And then we're going to put a quarter cup of granulated sugar on top of the egg yolks. And then you can mute this part because I know this is very loud or you can use a hand whisk, that's perfectly fine too. I'm just going to beat the egg yolks and sugar together until it becomes pale yellow. The color pale yellow represents that the sugar has dissolved and mixed really well together with the yolk. So I'm gonna do that as well. And one thing I like to do is I like to slightly tilt my bowl so that the liquid will flow down faster so it's easier to uh, whisk um, small liquid amounts. So I'm going to whisk it on um, medium to high speed for around a minute or two until it turns pale yellow. Thank you. 
egg yolks and of course its color, um, the outcome might be different. So for example, I have smaller egg yolks, but then my mix, so then, and they're also not as bright in color. So my mixture is quite pale already. But as long as you can feel that your, your uh, sugar has dissolved in the egg yolks, you're on the right track. Mine needs a little bit more um, mixing because I still can't draw the bigger piece, which I'll show you later once it's ready. So Brenda, you at, you mentioned that you could do this with a hand whisk. So how much longer would it be if we were doing this with a hand whisk? It could take up to five minutes, depending how fast you whisk. It's best to use room temperature egg yolks so that it'll whisk, uh, the air can incorporate faster as well and it'll, and it'll dissolve the sugar faster too. Double, double boiler. How much do you blend? You blend um, half a cup of sugar or a quarter cup. Up to you. Depends on your egg yolk size. It doesn't really make much of a difference. It's just the sugar level changes. But your egg yolks will still, uh, egg yolk and sugar will still dissolve and become a pale yellow mixture. Ooh, so, what I like to do is using a spatula, I just like to scrape the bowl, the sides of the bowl. So that if there's any sugar that has stuck onto the sides, it'll be mixed with the egg yolks as well. And Brenda, I believe you were using two egg yolks for this recipe, correct? Yeah, two egg yolks. Excellent. Preferable, they're medium size, that's the best. So my mixture is quite runny, as you can see. And you want to be able to draw a figure of eight either using your whisk paddle or with a spatula because that's when you know there's enough air in your yolk sugar mixture and the sugar has dissolved well. So as you can see, don't know if you can see, but my mixture is able to draw a slight figure of eight, but it's still not ready yet. So I still have to whisk it for maybe 30 more seconds. If we were thinking about using a replacement for the eggs, do you have anything in mind for this recipe? I would have to see, but usually um, you can use whipping cream um, and take out the mascarpone cheese and take out the egg yolks. I have another recipe that doesn't require eggs at all, at all. So I can post that one as well. Thank you. My mixture is ready. It is very pale in color. And I'm going to do the test of figure eight. I don't know if you can see, but it's able to draw a figure of eight on the surface of the mixture. My egg yolks are a little small, so, but it still works. Like three. Perfect ribbon stage. Wonderful. So now I'm just going to wipe the bottom of my bowl and I'm going to put the water back aside. So now I'm going to clean up the table because I like to keep my kitchen clean when I cook. <laughs> it's a habit of mine. <laughs> All right. Once that's clean, 
Now we're going to incorporate half a cup of room temperature marshmallow cheese into the egg yolk mixture. And now I'm just gonna mix it in with the egg yolk mixture. You don't have to be too gentle with it, just mix it and incorporate it well. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside and now we're going to make the whipping whipped cream. You don't have to change your hand mixer or you can still use the same electric mix paddle. My tip for making whipped cream is make sure the tip of your paddle doesn't go directly in directly to the bottom of your bowl. That doesn't help incorporate air well. I like to keep the tip of the paddle near the surface. So you're able to still whip the cream, but also incorporate more air. We're gonna whisk this for maybe a minute because it's only 60 grams, it's not a lot of whipping cream. And we don't want stiff peaks. We actually want the mixture to be slightly runny because the mascarpone cheese is very thick. So then the whipping cream just helps loosen up the cream cheese. I mean the mascarpone cheese. So I believe we have a question from Sung asking, um, how much of that whipping are you doing before you see a color change? There is no color change. Actually, there's a texture change. So you keep whisking and once you start seeing creases um, on the surface of your whipping cream, that's actually the time you stop whipping. All right, so this is the texture. It's still actually quite runny, as you can see. You can still turn it, it's not like stiff. So it's actually not even soft peaks yet. It's still very runny. It's just that you can see that it's a lot thicker, but it's still quite runny. So I'm gonna incorporate this into our mixture, our egg yolk mixture. I did not put uh, sugar into the whipped cream because the mascarpone cheese uh, already has sugar in it with, with the egg yolks and sugar. And we have a question um, yes. asking, how long have you been doing this for? Cooking um, or food marketing? Um, maybe both. <laughs> it's because my mom canceled Family Channel and cartoons, so I actually grew up watching Food Network for at a very young age. Um, I started taking food photos maybe three years ago. That's when I really started like my Instagram account as like a portfolio to really document what I've been eating and places I've been traveling to as well. So with the whipping cream, I poured it into the bowl. Now I'm slowly folding it into the mascarpone cheese and egg yolk mixture. This really helps loosen the thick uh, mascarpone cheese. 
and of course the egg yolks too. As you can see, it's a lot thinner in mixture because you're able to scoop it out and it spreads really well too. Yep. So and I just, um, like the whipping cream smells really great, but the mascarpone doesn't have any like real scent profile to it. So it's actually quite neutral. Mm hmm. So what does it do in this recipe? I'm not really sure. I should really study the history of mascarpone cheese. Um, but I think it's because it's quite neutral. It has a very smooth, creamy texture. I think that's why they decided to incorporate um, lady fingers that's sweet and airy with bitter uh, coffee. So I think it makes a really delectable dessert or evening dessert. All right, so we're gonna make this matcha flavor. So what I have here is one teaspoon of matcha powder. I'm not gonna directly dump it right in, it's because matcha powder does not mix well when it's dry or with very thick mixtures. It's best to actually pour a little bit of water and to make it taste. So what I have here is around 10 milliliters of warm water that I already poured out. I'm gonna pour it into this cute little saucepan dish. I'm just gonna mix the matcha with the water until it becomes a paste. It's okay if you pour it a little bit too much water because this mixture is still very thick, so it's quite forgiving. All right, so my mixture, my matcha and water mixture has been mixed really well together. There's no more clumps and lumps. So I'm just going to pour a little bit into the mixture and fold it in first so that um, my mixture doesn't randomly thin out or have any issues when I'm incorporating such thin liquid into it. And we have some questions saying, you know, is there a replacement someone could use if they don't have matcha? You can use cocoa powder. You can use kanako, so like soybean flour. Anything powder form is okay. You can either consider ube powder that a lot of um, people are very interested in nowadays. What is ube powder? Ube is a Filipino, uh, it's kind of like a F Filipino sweet potato, but it's just purple in color. All right, so my mixture, the first uh, batch of matcha liquid went in really well. So now I'm going to add the remaining amount. Just going to scrape out all the matcha. Into the bowl. All right, so now I'm just going to fold it in. Or you can mix. Up to you. Fold, the folding technique is very simple. All you do is uh, take your mixture, scrape from the bottom, and then fold it up. And then you do it again. Take, scoop from the bottom, and then fold up your mixture. Just like that. And there you have it. We have a matcha mascarpone. Hi. Allison Shoringham. Hi. Yes. Hey, Allison. It's great to see you on the call. We're just going to mute everybody so we can hear Brenda's audio, if that's okay with you. Sure. Great. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions before we assemble the matcha turning soup? Okay, now we're going to make the ladyfinger soap. Usually regular um, tiramisu, they use coffee liqueur, brewed coffee, sugar, but we're gonna make it matcha. So what I have here are my ladyfingers. Take a quite shallow uh, bowl. That's like long, uh, long enough where you can dip your ladyfingers well, or wide enough. 
as well. And then in a glass, I put one teaspoon of matcha, one teaspoon of sugar, and I'm gonna pour 100 milliliters of warm water. It's to dissolve the matcha and sugar so that it can be combined really well. So. Take a spoon and just uh, stir it together. When you are stirring, you might uh, hear the sugar granule crystal, so just keep stirring until it becomes a smooth mixture. Until no more matcha is clumped together. And then I'm gonna pour it into my shallow uh, bowl. All right, and then I'm going to take my lovely tiramisu bowl or container. You can use anything. I use, this is actually my lunch kit. I just felt like glass just looks a lot better, but you can use plastic or any container you want. Even a baking dish is good enough too. You can just serve it right on the table and just scoop it on people's plates. You can do that as well. All right, so now I'm gonna take my lady finger and I'm gonna soak it into this matcha liquid. Don't over soak it actually because the liquid will seep out of the lady finger and into the mascarpone uh, cheese cream. And then your matcha tiramisu will be slight run, it'll be quite runny. So all you have to do is just turn it two to three times, just enough that the lady finger is coated. It doesn't have to be completely uh, soft and squishy, just lightly coated. So I'm just going to toss it two and three times, do a little shake, and I'm just gonna place it on the bottom of my tiramisu container. And I'm gonna continue, um, I'm gonna do four of these. Bottom. Where can you buy lady fingers? Uh, I found them at Superstore. I think most grocery stores should have it, uh, especially the larger one. They might be in the biscuit aisle. All right. I always used to think Lady Fingers was such a funny name for these. I know, but they are like fingers, I guess. <laughs> they are. Because <laughs> my container is not wide enough, so I actually just pinched off the end of one lady finger so that it'll all fit and it'll look like this. Now, I'm just going to put the cream layer on top. You can use an ice cream scoop or you can just use a spatula, up to you. I'm just gonna take two heaping scoops of my matcha cream and just put it on top of the lady fingers. And then I'm gonna use, you can use a small little spoon or you can use a spatula. I'm just gonna evenly spread out and distribute the cream. I'm gonna make sure the cream touches the edges of the container so it'll look really pretty and you kind of can see multiple layers um, at the, in the final part. All right, so it's been distributed. Well, it doesn't have to be super smooth as long as it's completely coated. Now I'm gonna do the second and final layer. If you want to serve this right away, there's different ways you can make um, tiramisu. One thing I found out, uh, a lot of Korean cafes, they like to actually soak the lady fingers and directly stack them on a plate like this. Then they don't even put mascarpone cheese or egg yolks. They just make a really runny but slightly thick uh, whipping whipped cream mixture. And they just scoop it onto uh 
stacked um, lady fingers to make it like a mountain. And then they just dust cocoa powder or tiramisu powder on top, put two strawberries on it, and then serve. So there's so many ways to make tiramisu. This is just more of the classic way where you actually have to refrigerate this overnight. So let me finish the second and final layer of our lady fingers. And we have some comments um, saying how beautiful the color is. And maybe how high can you stack this? Theoretically, <laughs> you can stack this. Uh, if you have a tall container, you can make multiple layers, but then you would have to adjust the quantity of your cream and you can make as much liquid, soaking liquid as you want. Because there's a heat, usually at the grocery store, my pack of lady fingers was this big. So I was actually able to make four and a half tiramisu. Half being it, I made it as the Korean style. So four containers of tiramisu we can make with just one pack of lady fingers. That's great. And I have one more question asking, where did you buy your mascarpone from? I bought it from Freshco, uh, Superstore. You can also, I found out you can get it at Price Smart, but the best was uh, Superstore for price and quantity as well. All right, my final layer is ready. Let me move these plates away. So now I'm going to add two more scoops. If you, have extra, if you have extra cream and your container allows you to put more, I would just put more on top. So it'll, it'll, taste, it'll taste delicious as well. So you don't have to worry. So for example, I still have quite a bit of cream left, so I'm just going to put everything on top. And I see a question from Nancy asking, is it okay to put this in the freezer if you have extra tiramisu? Yes, you can. Just make sure, um, if you're gonna do that, I'd highly recommend you try to fill your container uh, with cream to the top so that um, there's no excess uh, air bubbles or anything. So once you defrost it, uh, it'll retain its shape a little bit better. Yes, you can make ice cream tiramisu as well. You just have to take out your ice cream maybe 20 to 30 minutes in advance before you assemble because your ice cream will become softer and it'll be like really great for spread. Excuse me, I have to say bye now because I have to play your woman now. Okay, oh gosh, bye, bye Allison. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you next time. All right, so I have put all the cream in my little container. I like to give it a little jiggle, just even out the cream. So this is what it looks like. Looks okay. If you want a thicker, uh, you can make a whipping cream thicker so that you can see the lady fingers in between. But I found out that didn't allow the lady fingers to develop uh, in flavor and really get some of the mascarpone cream flavor. So I like mine a little bit runnier because now we actually don't get to eat it because you have to put it in the fridge uh, for overnight. This allows you to scoop the uh, tiramisu better and have it freestanding. So there's a lot of recipes that you sometimes use gelatin and I don't like that. So definitely highly recommend you put it in the fridge. I did not make another one because uh, it's not a television show, but usually I like to present my tiramisu with a sprinkle of matcha powder on top. And a lovely trick that I learned was that you have to put icing sugar or confectioner sugar on top to absorb the moisture from the cream. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I have maybe around a teaspoon or two of powdered sugar. I'm gonna take the little whisk, the sift, sorry, and I'm just gonna put it in. And I'm gonna lightly dust the top with powdered sugar. Just enough to Cover the matcha cream. Like snow. <laughs> All right, it's enough. And now I'm gonna take one teaspoon of matcha, put it in the sift, and I'm gonna sift it on top of the powdered sugar. 
beautiful. All right. And your tiramisu is completed. Looks like this. Wow. Wow. If you want to be even fancier, you can clean the edges. I like to use a oil brush or anything. Anything that's able to clean the edges of my container. So I love this. Our painter's brush. That's, I think that's mm -hmm. what my parents use. So just like to brush off the edges. Get a nice clean look. And all you have to do is put it in the fridge. You don't have to cover it if you don't want to. Uh, one thing I noticed, I just, I actually just pop my tiramisu in the fridge, uncovered. Um, the mascarpone cheese uh, top actually dries out a bit more, and you can actually skip the powdered sugar layer. But a lot of recipes call for the powdered sugar, so I do that. So this will have to go into the fridge. But if you want to try it now, you can as well. So that is the end of our matcha tiramisu tutorial. <laughs>